Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 15 with me Craig Barton. If you are watching these Resource of the Week in sequence, let me wish you a very happy new year. I hope you had a lovely break. If you're not watching them in sequence, hello, you're more than welcome anyway. So what are we going to look at for the first Resource of the Week to kickstart this new calendar year? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a little Once Upon a Time story. Why not? So uh, Once Upon a Time, in fact, it was uh, last academic year. Um, we were studying the area and perimeter unit with our year eight students. And I always like to dig around, try and find something different that, that the rest of the department can use just to spice it up a little bit because area and perimeter is one of those things that flipping out kids have been doing since what? year three, year four, something like that, but they still need to practice it, of course, but we always like to look for a more interesting, um, investigative, richer way of doing it. And I stumbled upon those area mazes. I don't know if you remember, they were all over the papers. It was the latest, um, latest challenging puzzle from Japan or whatever. Kids of two were answering them and all this kind of stuff. And I'll be honest with you, I got a little bit addicted to them. There was a mobile phone app and all that kind of stuff, and I was absolutely hooked on these area mazes. So I remember showing them a, a departmental meeting and saying to staff, right, I reckon we should show the try these with our kids. And they were like, oh, come on, are you joking me? They're going to flip and hate these. And I said, we'll just try one or two out, see how they get on. Anyway, it was like a revolution. Kids were demanding more and more of these area mazes. They were flipping loving them, could not get enough of them. They were going on the internet to try and find them as hard as they possibly could and all this kind of stuff. Honestly, it was unbelievable. So... I was dead happy whenever I discovered on Tez not one, but two collections of these area mazes. And I thought, what a perfect thing to do would be to feature these in a resource of the week. So they're very, very simple. Um, I've linked to both of them in the description. So here's the first, this consists of eight. And then the other by the same author consists of another 12, which if my math is right, gives you 20 area mazes to play along with. So let's have a look at the first one. Now, if you're looking at question one thinking, are you winding me up here? Is this a joke? Trust me, just give that to the kids, get them into the way of thinking about it. And then when you start to get to things like number three, you can see that a little bit more thinking has got to come into play and we're starting to get into multi-step way of doing it. And then by the time that you get to question eight, well, then they're really having to start to think and combine stuff together and so on. And that kind of thinking continues into the more challenging ones here. Now, of course, this helps students study area and perimeter. Of course it does. And also, students are probably not going to be given a question like question 7 or question 12 on their GCSE. But we've all seen those missing length style questions. We've all seen those in context, tile in a floor, whatever questions where students need to be good at the dimensions. They need to be good at uh, filling out missing lengths for working out compound area. They need to be fully confident in terms of splitting shapes up and all that kind of stuff. So it's great for that. But on a deeper level, it is just more challenging. It's challenging work for students. It's logical thinking. It's working backwards. It's testing things out. It's giving arguments. And I should say, when I ran this with my students, uh, one of the things I said, certainly when we got to the more difficult ones was I said you have to convince me of your answer it's no good just writing down six centimeters or something like that why is it six just you don't need to write a load of sentences just give me one line of working that means that if I showed this to somebody else they would go ah oh, yeah actually I understand why they've got six centimeters and so on so it just gets students then into their mindset of mathematical communication setting out their work all that kind of stuff so yeah look if you've got area and perimeter coming up, please just give these area mazes a go. They work brilliantly with our year eight students. Um, you could use them kind of as a little one-off puzzle style lesson, but I'm not a big fan of that. I'd rather integrate things like this into the actual uh, topics themselves. But honestly, I know I'm hyping this up, but just give them a go. And then on a, I'm not going to promote the app on here because I think I had to pay 99p for it or something like that. Um, but try the app honestly as a teacher you'll and a bit of a geek you'll flip and love it anyway so there you go and i shall see you with a fresh resource of the week next week take care of yourselves bye for now